Hey, it's Jeff Gibbons here, and I'm going to show you my favorite feature in the new Cubase Pro 10 update. So Cubase Pro 10 came out in November, and it brought a whole bunch of new features that have been talked about on other YouTube videos. But I wanted to do a video that shows what I think is the most important feature in this new version of the software. And this feature is called edit mode. So whether you're doing sound effects for video or whether you are doing music for video, edit mode is going to help you immensely. It's really something that's been around in a lot of other programs for a long time. But as you can see, if I drag this little chunk of audio from side to side, the video will be updated in real time. And this applies to anything from a fade in to a chunk of MIDI to a marker. All you have to do is go up to transport and make sure use video follows edit mode is turned on. But let me show you quickly how this works with sound effects uh, for a video project. So something you're often going to have is a situation where you need to line up sound effects with something on screen. So with this little chunk of video of my kids here, I'll just show you uh, what you could do. So the first thing I would do is go to media bay, which is under media, media bay or command M and up pops Media Bay and I can punch in some sound effects that I'm looking for. So I would be looking for foot or feet and it digs through all of my sound effects. I have quite a large sound effects library. So if I go to footsteps gravel, I can hear what each one of these sound effects sound like. I'm gonna use this sound effect right here, this footsteps gravel and it's walking. And what I can do with, within the media bay is just drag up at the top for a selection because I just need a little chunk of it. I'm going to drop that in there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to resize each one of these so that it starts right on the, the heavy part of the footstep. So something like there, and then I'll cut right there for the second uh, footstep. So all I need is two, two footsteps. Let me get rid of my original ones. What I'm going to do now is take this over and I'm going to line it up for where the foot starts to hit. So right there. So you see as the heel hits, that's going to be the where the loudest part of the footstep is. And I'll stretch out the beginning of that footstep a little bit, fade it in and okay. So now the sound effect falls right on that uh, where the foot falls and then this one will do the same thing. It's a little earlier so it starts right there. So you can see the foot hitting the ground and I'll just stretch this out a little bit more and fade it in and fade it out. Another thing you can do is with your background ambiences. So every time a scene changes usually we have depending on the film we have we want to change what happens in the background. So as far as the background noise. So for this one, I've got a sound effect that's just country day. I've used this one about a thousand times. And uh, with this one, I'm going to resize until this scene starts to fade in on the video. So I can see this start to fade in right there. So I'll stretch it a little further back and then watch what I can do with the fade in as well. So the fade in, because it's a fade in with the video, I can fade the sound effect in as opposed to if it was a hard start, I probably have no fade in at all. But if I stretch this out, you can see I can fade this in right to where the fade in actually stops, which is right there. And so now the sound effect will fade in perfectly with the length of the fade on the video. And I can do the same thing here. So I stretch this out till it ends and then the sound fades out and I can redo this as well. Start it so that as soon as it starts fading out, that's when the fade will begin, which is right there. Show you what I would do if I had a whole bunch of sound effects. Now I just go to the beginning of that little scene and bring the fade until it goes to the fade is done, which is right there on all of them at the same time. So now the sound effects for those ones are also fading in and the footsteps are timed perfectly to the video. It doesn't look that astounding, but it's not until you start editing hundreds and hundreds of sound effects in a project that you realize how absolutely vital this edit mode actually is. There's a lot of times where we do something called Mickey Mousing, and that's where you have the music follow the visuals. I did the music for this one and there were some spots where I wanted the, the music to follow some of the action. And so even though he's playing a piano in here, I have the music follow 
the hits of his piano. So let me show you what that looks like. And so right there we can see him playing the piano and you can see this little hit right here. If I take the snap off and move this note around with edit mode on, the note will follow the video. And so all I have to do is move it till it lines up right with his fingers hitting the keys and then do the same thing with this chord. You can line it up right there and then, and then each one of these notes I can have them hit perfectly with each note that he is playing on the piano. So that's how I get that one lined up so perfectly right there. And then you can also use the edit mode with entire chunks of music that you've got. So in this section right here, the music keeps changing tempo and I sort of come up with a little thing that works. And so you see right when the, the scene changes to color, I need to make sure that the music, this music cue was finished. So what I did was I use the time warp tool, which is this one now, it looks a little bit different. And as long as your time warp tool is set to musical events follow, watch what happens to this entire section of music as I move it around. It gets, it gets brought along with the bars and beats with wherever my cursor is. So all I have to do is find that first frame, which is right there. So that's the first frame of color. And so now this whole section of music lines up perfectly with that frame. So what I do is I drop in my markers at certain points before I've even started any music. And I leave those markers set on a linear time base. So not a musical time base. That way, when I am adjusting the music, I don't have to worry about uh, the markers moving as well. And so the markers are locked in time and then everything else fits up to those. So that's usually what I do is I'll go in, drop in a bunch of markers that line up according with the video. So I'll drag the marker until that scene change right there. You might want to zoom in a little bit more as you're doing this. And then here's another point where I dropped a marker because there's another scene change right there. Okay, so now I can take my time warp tool and just drag this over to that marker and my music gets stretched out accordingly and everything just lines up perfectly. I hope you appreciate this. Give edit mode a try and uh, go to gibbonscreative.ca to see all of the other things that I'm up to. I'm a photographer, a videographer and a composer and producer. So thanks for watching.